Hi, my name is Matteo Campanelli and I'm going to talk about Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse is a better committed proof snark with the universal SRS. It's actually a family of committed proof snarks. And this is a joint work with um, other researchers from Oklahoma University, Concordium, and the Indian Institute of Science. Our setting can be split in three parts. So we care about succinct interactive zero knowledge snarks. I'll tell more about that. We want commit to improve clearly. I'll tell more about that too. And we care about the setting where we have a universal trusted setup of linear size. Now, succinct and interactive zero knowledge uh, consists of the following setting. Imagine you have a relation R with a public input X and a witness W. For example, W could be a signature for which you want to prove knowledge with respect to a certain, uh, certain public statement X, then a prover can provide a very succinct certificate pi that can be verified by a verifier using X as a, a input, using the following syntax. We call this an arc, if it's of knowledge. Now, this setting, we care about snarks that are zero knowledge, is the standard zero knowledge setting. So in the interactive case, P and V are two parties that interact, and at the end, V is convinced that some W satisfying certain properties known. Now, we're going to care about a more specific setting, what I'm calling commit and prove, or CP, zero knowledge, which is when we trust data, um, we trust that P is knowledge of some data that can be pointed to. In particular, what P is going to do is going to commit here represented with an envelope to a witness W, it's going to be up there, and V can have some guarantees about what uh, what properties holds for W. And, and so notice in particular that what we're proving is both that a certain property holds, so these are, but also that uh, the envelope opens to this witness W. So we prove the relation and this commit. Now, why do we care about this setting? There's uh, many, many different scenarios. Anywhere we care about compression and fingerprinting. Imagine you have a hospital holding sensitive health uh, data and we want to train public machine learning model. So what's going to happen, what could happen possibly is that the data could be committed in a very succinct way. This commitment is public. It's authenticated by the government and such, and then we can publicly prove that a certain training uh, procedure was executed on them. Other settings involve commit ahead of time, which here, um, with this name, I'm calling any setting where we commit to a bunch of data, for example, my credentials, some data about me, uh, my credit history, my passport, and so on. And then later, even when, after I've committed this, I can prove things about it. And then we also know that CP commit and proof can be useful to obtain very efficient uh, composition of proofs when we have proof system with different strengths. Okay, so these settings, settings translate to clear applications, so anonymous credentials, blockchains with privacy properties, and then in general, anywhere we need data to be referenced in a certain manner, in particular, privately and system. So just the, going back to the syntax of SNARKs versus CP SNARKs to understand the difference, there's not really any difference. Here in the SNARK setting, we're proving a relation R, and in the CP SNARK case, we're proving the relation R, and the consistency between W and certain public commitments. Here we have L commitments, and I'm representing with this dotted, sorry, dashed lines, the opening relation. So I say there's really no difference, but why do we care about this setting? Well, the reason is that there are, there are some efficiency advantages in doing that. Efficiency advantages and interoperability properties we want to strive for. In particular, we want this augmented relation, this R plus opening, to be efficiently provable and verifiable. And then we want these commitments to be interoperable and as standard as possible. We want them to be interoperable among proof systems, and standard as in they should be parallel commitment with 
fuzzy curves or Merkle trees and so on. There are unsatisfactory solutions, for example, that uh, can, one can straightforwardly come up with. For example, use Merkle tree or Pedersen inside the relation R and then open that in the circuit. This achieves standard, the standard property, but it can be expensive. You need to do all this um, in the encoding of the relation. There are lots of tricks that um, the community came up with, and one of the most famous ones is the one deployed in Zcash with the jab jab curve. There's Coco, Vexel for bulletproofs. And these tend to be more efficient, but they're also curve dependent or dead dependent on different settings. So we care about having this efficiency, but also having generality of sort. Now, before the last component of our setting is trust models. Real quick, we know that we always have some type of setup uh, to achieve interactive zero knowledge. Now, in the best possible case, this is transparent. We can sample a uniform string, and this can work for that. It's basically no trusted setup. And then we have setting where we, this string is structured, and it's dependent on the relation. And then we have settings where this string depends only on some type of bound on the size of the relation. And then can be usually specialized in, um, deterministically, depending on the relation. And this is the setting we're going to care about. Often, this property is also um, paired with um, updatability, which is very useful. We are now ready to set our results. So in Eclipse, we provide new ways to construct efficient CPSNARs with universal SRS. And our results are as generic as possible. And we'll see a little bit more about them. In particular, breaking them down, we have a general compiler into CPSNARs with universal SRS of linear size. So take your favorite SNARC and SNARC with the SRS, and you can compile it into a CPSNARC. And now here I'm saying take your favorite SNARC and compile it, but really what I mean is take a SNARC in information theoretic form of sort. We're going to talk about that later, and you can convert it into a CPSNARC. Then we show how to concretely uh, apply this compiler to three very efficient and, and popular systems out there, Marlin, Plunk, and Sonic. Um, and in particular, the type of commitment uh, that we managed to obtain and then managed to support is a Patterson type commitment. And we managed to do that, importantly, because we care about efficiency in practice, we managed to do that with small overhead. Concretely, the overhead is this. So mm, the first here, I'm comparing Eclipse to other works on generic CPSNARs with universal SRS. And Eclipse in the first row, other results, other works we can compare the two naturally are the lunar paper and the Lego SNARK paper, which has this Lego USC. You can see how Eclipse obtains sublinear proof size. Here, L is the number of commitments we're committing to, and D is the size of the opening of each of the commitments. And when I say sublinear size, these are these rows refer to the applications of these proof systems to constant of the Eclipse compiler, the lunar compiler to constant size proof systems. And you can also see how we improve on lunar and proof size, and we obtain a trade-off in verification time. In particular, for example, Lunar achieves better proving time, better verification time in case D can be uh, the burn for the verifier. Now, I'm going to give a little bit more background about our techniques. And before that, I'm going to give more background about how we construct we construct um, the SNARKs with the universal SRS in general. And the way we construct them usually is from basically a recipe you already mentioned. Um, we use a compiler from an idealized information theoretic object. So, so we take this information theoretic object, if you're familiar with that, PCPs, AHPs, algebraic holographic, holographic proofs, and we take a, cryptograph, a cryptographic object, say a vector commitment, polynomial commitment, and others, collision resistant dash function. And we compile them into an object we can actually use as an arc. So what we obtain usually, what examples of uh, what we can obtain with these compilers are 
these constructions already mentioned, Sonic, Mark, and Plonk. Here, I'm just showing a table to show a little bit what type of efficiency they achieve. It's not super important right now, just to give uh, an idea, you can see proof is constant here, and the columns I um, I blocked, they're, they're not for censorship, but they're just because they're not relevant. So we can achieve these proof systems through these compilers, and we're gonna tweak this recipe, the recipe by which we achieve them a little bit. The recipe uh, is as follows. We take an algebraic holographic proof, which is, it doesn't matter what it is exactly, I'm gonna give you some intuition about it, but it's our idealized protocol. And you can think of it as an interactive idealized protocol where the prover holds polynomial encodings to the witness. So it takes the witness, it encodes that in a bunch of polynomials, and then the, it gives Oracle access to the verifier to the evaluations of these polynomials. And the verifier can query the prover on um, these provers, uh, polynomials provided by the prover in different points. More pictorially, you have your prover on the left, prover here says PHP, but PHP is a different idealized protocol that generalizes AHP, but you can think of that as algebraic holographic proof. And the prover puts in the sky these polynomials, and the verifier sends challenges sets. There are a few details I'm ignoring here, but this this is the main idea. And Q is a set of queries. Capital Q is a set of queries the verifier is going to ask. And each query is going to look like that. So each query can be, for example, P1 X star equals T star. Prove it to me. In, in this idealized protocol, the verifier just receives an answer to this and can check it. But in the real world, this doesn't happen. Also, one thing I ignore here, uh, this is going to come up later. This is an interactive world, but then it's going to be de-interactivized. It's going to be made non-interactive through the Fiat-Shamir heuristic. OK, so if you have an AHP, how do you compile that to a new SRS? SNARK to a new SRS NARC. And what you need here is polynomial commitment. This is the main tool in some other compilers, such as the Marlin, Dark, Luna, and Plum compilers. And by polynomial commitment, we mean a machinery get, that takes a polynomial and compresses it into a very short digest and allows to prove efficiently and succinctly in zero knowledge and evaluation of the polynomial, basically the queries I mentioned about, uh, earlier. But also, there are some other caveats. So, for example, they should allow often, um, they should allow to prove some guarantees, uh, want to prove some guarantees about the degree of the polynomial. We can ignore this detail for this presentation. The one po popular polynomial commitment we use in practice is the KZG commitment, which looks roughly like that. Now, I'm going to introduce some notation. So I'm going to talk about commitments of different types with different geometric shapes. Earlier in the relation, I used these little squares. But now I'm going to introduce a circle notation to, to denote commitments to these encodings we're using in the idealized object. So the squares are the ones that are input to the relation, and the circles are the one we use in the protocol. OK, so I mentioned the protocol. What is this protocol? What is this recipe? We have our idealized, idealized object and want to convert it into a snark. We take our polynomial commitment, and we use it to commit each of these encodings, p1, pn of the witness. Then the verifier, uh, the AHP verifier, is going to make some queries. And we can use the polynomial commitment machinery to prove these queries are satisfied. Nothing super surprising at the high level. There's a lot of important details to take care of, which I'm going to ignore here. Now, this is the recipe for SNARKs in general. We care about CP SNARKs. Let's see what, what we should do for them. So one more thing to mention is Phil Shamir. And why is this SRS universal before we move to CP SNARKs? And the reason why the structure reference string ends up being universal, so it's valid for any for any relation of a certain bound, is because the snark setup itself is the polynomial commitment setup, which itself just depends on the degree of the, 
of the polynomial. And the polynomial degrees related to the size of the relation. So next, let's look at the actual recipe for CP snarks. Of course, we need to change our syntax a little bit here. So I'm I'm introducing here the commit the commitment uh, C one to relation about and its opening OC. I'm going to assume just for for the time being that there's only one commitment, although in the general case there are L. And so we know by the earlier recipe that we can prove this dash part of the relation on the top left. So the actual relation, but what's left is to prove the connection between whatever the prover knows and these commitments that are also the, the public inputs to the verifier. So we need we need some additional piece into it. And remember this these uh, C1, Cn over here in the circle, in circles, they represent commitments to some encoding of the polynomial of the witness. So what we can do is we can show that they're linked to the witness, whatever string the square commitments are committing to. So intuitively we can add a proof, this pi link over here, an additional object that can link um, the commit the committed encodings circle C1, circle Cn, to whatever is in the square C. And so this linking proof, this is basically a specialized NARC uh, proofs linking or knowledge of a certain W such that the square C opens to some parts of W, or it's not going to be the whole witness. CI, the CI is opens to the polynomials encoding this witness and everything is consistent and, and nice. So this is the object we need, but of course, it's not that simple. I mean, sure, this is what we need, but there are a few challenges to, to solve, and this is what we do in Eclipse. Um, the challenge one, challenge one is we don't want to depend on the whole witness when we do this. So the commitment square C may only be part of the whole witness we are using in our relation. Are we paying for all of it when we are doing this proof? Hopefully not. So. In order not to pay for it, we show that um, we can decompose each of these encodings in an additive manner in Marlin Planck Sonic, you know, the constructions we care about, and we define an appropriate abstraction that helps us um, helps us doing this generically. And there's a, an important sub challenge here, which is proving that. Um, whatever we're decomposing doesn't overlap because a dishonest prover may may not do in this decomposition uh, as we expect. And then the second challenge we saw is that um, we want to have actually a concrete a concrete proof system for this linking. So it's a little bit like a chicken and egg problem. What proof system are we going to use for this? This is a snark. We're trying to build a snark. A CP snark, we need a CP snark for doing this, but we need a CP snark that's simpler. And what we use um, is intuitively sigma protocols to prove this relation. Because everything you need in each of these construction reduces to proving that a certain commitment C, the upper case C on the left here, that commits to the whole witness is basically equal to the concatenation of the openings or all these um, C hat eyes, which are commitments to parts of the witness. One way to do this is through sigma protocols. But then this requires naively all of size of the witness, um, size of each of these witnesses times number of commitments. And then we can compress that through uh, compressed sigma protocol Techniques from Matham and Kramer 2020 to logarithmic size. Okay, and the I want to spend a couple of words on the uh, the work that's very close in nature to to Eclipse which is Lunar. They both follow a similar bl blueprint of recipe, but Lunar is a quite different pairing based protocol for linking. They do share some intuitions at some point. But there are some technical differences in Lunar, for example, doesn't 
doesn't use any of the compressed sigma protocol tricks we use here. And indeed, it ends up requires to pay the communication complexity, a communication complexity that's linear in the number of connections. And there they show different trade-offs in efficiency, especially verifier time, as I saw before, and I'm gonna so show in the next slide. Also, Lunar uses a more general formalization, this PHP I ended up mentioning, polynomial or graphic proofs, I believe. Uh, but our work can be easily formal formalized in the same word framework. Okay, that leads us to the last slide of this presentation with a couple open questions. So, so far you can see how Eclipse and Lunar have these trade-offs in, um, in efficiency, but what's left as an open problem is obtaining something that's not just sublinear or logarithmic, but it's actually a constant size. We get it. An intuitive avenue to explore. There is some type of recursion, but to do that efficiently, maybe we need more specialized tricks of that. It'd be nice to see a, a CP snark with a general and modular CP snark with such, with such features. And then it'd be interesting to explore different techniques for this linking module we have and or finding other applications for the ones we have. Thank you so much for presenting my presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to write to me or any of my collaborators. Thanks.